Go pour yourself a hot flag and a grog, because this is about to get really good. Greetings to the Barbarian Horde. Glad you've returned for additional torment. I mean, unless you're new to this channel, in which case what I meant to say was, welcome aboard. In the last chapter, we learned one of the terrible secrets hidden below the Wailing Willow. This is Chapter 8 of The Wailing Willow. If you missed Chapter 7, you probably hate yourself right now and are desperate for a solution. Don't sink into the dreck of despair. Just click the link up here or follow the link down in the trumpery below and... Happiness restored. To reduce your chances of encountering a malevolent ghost, be sure to like and subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon. Or risk getting ectoplasm on your clean pants. And now, before any more haste is posted... Chapter 8 By Brian Carey. Chapter 8 The ghost of Willow burned white with anger, her visage now a hideous skull. She shrieked at Dane for his deceit. Angus knocked an arrow into his bow and leveled it at the ghost. Wolfric, spotting Angus's plans, shouted, Wait, don't shoot! Remember the pebble! It'll go right through! You'll make it angry! It already looks very angry! Angus burst back. Liar, deceiver, trickster! She pointed and screamed. Prevaricator! The ghost of Willow faltered for words to ascribe to him her outrage. Without warning, another ghostly blue figure floated up behind Willow. This new apparition was much smaller and came from the blackened and decrepit baby crib. Wolfric fell silent while Angus felt his heart grow cold and whispered to himself, horror struck. No, please, no! Atman, save us! The child-sized ghost had the face of a malformed and hollow skull. It started screaming. The child's intense, unworldly shriek nearly brought all three men to their knees. Willow's rage grew. Now look what you've done! You've woken the baby! She began to swirl around like a snake and with no warning dove headfirst into Dane's chest, disappearing inside of him. Dane fell to the ground, screaming out in pain as the tail end of the ghost entered his heart. Wolfric and Angus were astounded and dumbfounded by what their eyes had just witnessed. A brief silence took hold of Dane as he arduously stood. He moved stiffly as if fighting his own motions. Once Dane got to his feet, he raised both his arms and gently levitated above the ground. His body slowly twisted around unnaturally in midair and then confronted Wolfric and Angus. For the first time, they saw Dane's face. Blue-white light glowed intensely out of Dane's eyes and beamed from his mouth. He coldly demanded, in Willow's voice, Bring me Matthias. The repulsive ghost of Willow's baby continued shrieking, causing disorientation. Wolfric, cold and nervous, was almost panic-stricken. There appeared to him no favorable course of action. Angus aimed his bow at Dane's chest. No! Wolfric shoved Angus's bow off Mark. You'll kill Dane! She's taking physical form, Angus objected. This may be our only chance to kill her, laddie. No, Wolfric screamed to be heard over the shrieking spectral baby. There has to be another way. Dane's possessed body floated toward them and started swinging his sword at Wolfric and Angus. He was clumsy, as if fighting for control of his own body. Not wishing to hurt Dane's body, the other two strategically backed away. They tried to maneuver toward the other open door, hoping to escape. Dane's body listed awkwardly through the air as she swung his sword. This time, they heard Dane's voice. I'm sorry, this isn't what I want. This isn't what I want, he begged. Dane, Wolfric shouted. Is that you? How can we help you? Please, just run. I don't want to do this. Dane's sword whipped through the air. I can't help it. I can't help it. It's not what I want. Please, I'm so sorry. His sword swooshed through the air as she swung at them again and again. The baby's shrill, unworldly screeches caused increasing disorientation. Dane's body began moving with greater ease and dexterity. 
With the eyes still glowing, the body now spoke with Willow's multi-octave screech. I am in control. I will kill him. Bring me Matthias. Bring me Matthias, or I swear he will fall on his sword. She held the sword to her own throat. Dane's throat. They powerlessly beheld as she pressed the sharpened tip of Dane's sword into the soft, sensitive skin of his neck. As the sword slowly sunk into the flesh and opened a cut, white light started beaming out from this new opening in his neck. Dang, my fire. Both Wolfric and Angus glanced at each other. Wolfric shouted, I think we left Matthias right over there. We'll be right back. And both men bolted for the wooden door. Miraculously, the door actually opened. Both men ran through and slammed it behind them, and then turned and pressed their weight against the door. They waited, panting, wide-eyed in fear, and caught their breath. The muffled shrieking of the ghostly child was all they could hear. This new room was warm, and allowed them to briefly take stock of themselves. It was at this critical moment that Wolfred Brynjar and his new Dwelmer friend Angus Irondome formed a bond. Having realized the crucial importance of fidelity to the group, it was in this moment they realized they would never, under any circumstances, split up or leave a man behind. Their course of action was clear. They had to work together to rescue Dane and free him from Willow's tormenting possession. Sorry about your brother, Wilfric. I really am. But he's crapped, Angus confessed. But hear me now, I am never going back into that room ever again. Your brother can be banished to the Underdark for all I care. I am not dying for someone I've barely met. Wolfric nodded his head. He was a terrible brother anyways. I should have let you shoot him. After a moment, his breathing slowed. He started to stare at the swirling cold air seeping underneath the door. You know, Dane was always a pain in the barkus. But now what with the glowing eyes and the floating and the trying to murder us? I'm not going back in there either. So we agreed, Angus nodded. We find a way out of here, part ways, and never look back at the Wailing Willow ever again. You've got a deal. In fact, Angus, there is enough dragon's milk and all of Karth to keep me here. Wolfric, this place, it, it doesn't even make sense. How do these people not know about this ghost? Hidden rooms, the cellar, the layout, everything, it makes no sense. Ah, uh, it might. Everything past the secret stone entrance we found as hidden living quarters. I suspect this place was used for smuggling slaves or hiding people. These rooms were probably all secret. I'm guessing when the lever broke on the other side of that room where the man died inside, no one ever found him because no one knew where to look. Aye, Angus nodded, and then exhaled slowly. So now what? We've got our weapons. And we're down to this one torch, Wolfric added. Angus nodded. We dwellmer can see quite well in low light, but you might want to be careful not to let that torch go out just the same. Granted, though there's not much torch left. Wolver held the torch aloft, and for the first time, the human and the dwarf surveyed the room in which they now found themselves. This room was fairly large, and similarly to the other rooms, rough-hewn stone walls surrounded them. Heavy rectangle-cut timbers supporting the walls appeared at regular intervals. The floor was hard-packed dirt, mold, and an occasional patch of mushrooms. The only elements truly noticed were the scores of cream-colored silk-wrapped carcasses, mostly dire rats, that littered the floor. Each one sucked dry, desiccated, and collapsed. A few sticky bundles dangled from the strands affixed to the ceiling. This led them to look up. The ceiling was thickly blanketed with sticky, cream-colored spiderwebs which fully concealed the ceiling and obscured the tops of the support beams. There were thick bulges and protuberances in some areas above them, as if something, or someone, were wrapped in place and stored for later. Some of the masses twitched and shuddered. Looking up at the imposing legion of webbing, Angus made a profound assessment. Oh, that's not good, lad. You've a knack for understatement, rock noggin. That's Iron Dome. What's that sound? They listened carefully. They could just make out the sound of muffled squeaks. I think that it's spiders, Wolfric whispered. I know it's blasted spiders, lad, the Dwelmer shout whispered back. Don't tell me what I already know, Trent. He shook his head. At least all the dire rats are. He kicked a pillow-sized silk bundle over. So behind door number one, face an insane ghost which is currently possessing my little brother, which I really do need to do something about, Wolfric debated. 
or two face my thoday knows how many spiders, which are apparently big enough to make meals of dire rats. Dire rats the size of overfed terriers? Angus looked intense. Well, I, for one, do not intend on becoming one of those silk-wound bundles. I wonder. Wolfric pondered, looking up. He reached ceilingward with his torch, stretching towards some low-hanging webbing. No! Angus screamed. You'll set the entire tavern alight! True to form, Wolfric ignored the Dwemer's logical and wise counsel, opting instead to ignite the webbing. The spider silk, being highly flammable, burst into ignition and spread nigh instantly over the entire ceiling. The room lit up in flames like the noonday sun. There was an audible and terrifying whoosh sound as the air was sucked through the room. What have you done? You've just burned the tavern down on us! Angus screamed. You've just killed us, you stinking ground your chin-faced chaos monkey! Yes, the chin-faced chaos monkey can't put the fire out with his sword. They will probably all die unless you share this video series with a friend and click the like button, the subscribe button, and don't forget to click the bell icon. Click it now, before it gets worse, before the fire spreads. Chapter 9 is right over here. It calls to you. Click for chapter 9 or the dwarf and the brothers get it. Don't be a chaos monkey. Click the link.